This video is going to give you the step-by-step -step instructions as well as a few tips and tricks on how to assemble a Dragon Strand Hybrid Chameleon Enclosure. Feel free to follow along with the instructions that come with the cage itself, which I will link to in the description box below. If you have the tall screen enclosure, then you should be able to follow along for most of these steps with the exception of step four, attaching the dragon strand ledges on the side panels, because that process is going to be a little different from the hybrid enclosure. Dragon Strand enclosures are made by Bill Strand, who you may know as the brain and voice behind the Chameleon Academy and Chameleon Academy podcast, which are great resources that I will link down in the description box below. The tall hybrid enclosure is 23 and 3 quarter inches wide, 23 inches deep, and 48 inches tall. This is going to be a great size for an adult panther, veiled, or Jackson's chameleon, as well as an adult female Christopher chameleon. Some of the benefits of the hybrid enclosure versus the screen enclosure is that the hybrid provides a visual barrier between cages as well as holds in the spray from misting so you don't have to worry about the water going out the sides and onto your walls or floors or things like that. It also helps hold in the humidity and gives a little extra support for attaching potted plants and branches to the sides and back of the enclosure. I quickly wanted to highlight some cool features of the Dragon Strand enclosures, one being that they come with a flip-up service door on the bottom of the enclosure that allows for easy access to clean up. You can also choose between two different floors for your cage and they come with dragon ledges which we will get into later on as well as hydration mounds and a drainage tray which are all great features unique to the Dragon Strand enclosure and we'll go into more detail later on in the video. So without further ado, let's start putting together this awesome cage. Once your Dragon Strand cage arrives, you'll want to unbox it and verify that you have all of the contents. If you find that you're missing parts, make sure that you contact Bill at bill at dragonstrand.com. You'll want to make sure that you have all the hardware packs that are available. In addition, you'll want to make sure that you have all the PVC plastic parts. And that big white box that you see there is actually the drainage tray. It is also the PVC bottom and screen bottom, which is kind of cool because you can decide which one you want to customize your enclosure. Make sure you get all the tape off. And the bulk of this package is going to be all the various cage panels. So make sure you verify that you have all the correct parts. You'll notice that mine are white PVC backgrounds. If you have the hybrid enclosure, then that's what you'll expect. If you don't have the hybrid, then you should have all screen panels besides the back panel. The tools that you will need for assembly are going to be a Phillips head screwdriver, scissors to unwrap parts, and bowls to hold screws. I also ended up needing an electric drill, so I'm going to make note of that. It's, it's optional, but it made my life a lot easier to use. Some pro tips from Bill Strand himself are to first, not over tighten the screws, because that can strip the hole, and be careful not to puncture the screen when you're attaching screws. Only open a screw bag when you need it. And lastly, the side with the sticker is the inside of the cage, except for the bottom frame. And now it's time to start building. If you're following along with the instruction manual, we're moving on to step two, which is going to be install latches, keepers, and hinges. All the latches, keepers, and hinges are going to be mounted on the outside of the panels in pre-drilled holes. So you're going to want to open the various bags that you're going to need. So right now I'm opening up bag N, which is going to include a latch, which is what you're seeing here to open and close the enclosure. And the other piece to the puzzle is going to be what's called a keeper, also found in bag N. And this is what the latch will hook onto. You can see that there's different sides, so it's going to be important that you attach it correctly. We'll go over that. And I soon realized that I'm going to need more bowls for all of the different parts and all the different baggies. So I found that working with three bowls was the way to go. Another trick that I found made my life easier is once I opened the baggie, then I put it underneath the bowl. So I knew which bowl corresponded with which bag and which part. So this just helped me stay organized while I was building the enclosure. So for step two, you're going to need bag N, bag M, and bag L. 
In bag M, you'll find the hinge, which is a little black plasticky thingy you're seeing here. You'll also need bag L with these teeny, teeny, tiny screws. Very teeny. <laughs> and lastly, you're gonna need bag N, which we kind of went over before with the lashing keepers. So right now you're going to be looking for left panel A. All the panels are marked with a sticker that says what they are. So as you can see, left panel A, that's the one that we're looking for. Once you have found left panel A, then you're going to flip it around and you're going to need three keepers. We're looking for three sets of two holes to attach the keepers to. So you can see two sets of holes, two sets of holes, and then the last set of two holes. That's where we're gonna be attaching the keepers. So just a reminder, this is what the keeper looks like. Make sure you're attaching it the correct way, which is this way. I ended up cr attaching them the wrong way. It was an easy fix later on, but I'm just giving you guys a heads up um, that that's the correct way that you want to attach them. So you can just take your screwdriver and tighten them, but remember not too tight. So I'm gonna show you guys how I did it incorrectly. So as you can see, these are facing downward instead of upward. So make sure you don't do it like this. <laughs> so put that panel aside and next we're looking for right panel C. So again, we're going to flip that over and we're going to be attaching just one single keeper towards the bottom. So you're gonna look for those same grouping of two holes and you're going to attach the keeper. Again, don't do it the way I'm about to show you. You want to actually flip it the other way around so that they're pointing up. So then just take your screwdriver, do what you did with the other ones, tighten them with the screws that came in that bag, but not too tight. And then once you're done, go ahead and put that panel aside. Now we're looking for main door H. There's going to be the bigger screen piece here. And as you can see, it's marked there, right? That's so handy. On main door H, you're going to attach two latches to the left side of the panel and two hinges to the right side of the panel. And then on service door G on the front, you're going to attach two latches on either side And on the back side, you're going to attach the door stop, which is that long black plastic bit and just screw it onto the service door G. And once those are all completed and all those pieces are attached, then you will have completed step two. Next up is step three, which is installing the hydration mounts. To do this, you're going to need bag J, which includes two hydration mounts, two grommets, and six half inch self driller screws. You're also going to need top panel E for this step. So the hydration mounts are optional. If you're going to mist by hand, you can skip right along to step four. However, if you're planning on installing an automatic misting system, it is a good idea to install your hydration mounts prior to moving forward with the rest of the assembly. What's pretty cool is that you can put them wherever you want. They can be mounted anywhere along the inside of top panel E. I chose to put mine, one on the left, one on the right towards the front of the enclosure so then I could place my misting nozzles to face towards the back of the enclosure. So just strategically place where you want your hydration mounts based off of how many mister heads you're gonna be using. Um, in the instructions, it mentions a grommet. I think that's how you say it. And if you're using a Miss King missing system, then you can remove the grommet before installing your hydration mount. If you're planning on using any other brand of missing system that requires a quarter inch tubing for the missing system, then you'll want to install the grommet when you are installing your hydration mounts. In the instructions, it says that you can use the self starting, self drilling screws, but I tried my darndest to get these screws in there and I could not even make a dent. Like I was barely scratching the surface. So I ended up having to use a drill to 
install the screws and that was after I reached out to Bill and other keepers and that's what they suggested is if you can't get them going by hand then just go ahead and use a, an electric drill so that worked like a charm but um, good luck to you if you're, you're trying to do this by hand once you finish installing one or two or none of your hydration mounts go ahead and put top panel E to the side and we'll move right along this next step is going to be totally optional. It's going to be how to install a custom backdrop. If you're not interested in the custom backdrop, go ahead and skip right along to the timestamp on the screen here. I wanted to make my enclosure a little more naturalistic and visually interesting than just the plain white or screen enclosure. So I ended up ordering this backdrop from petbackdrops.com. There you can choose from a variety of different backdrops that they already have, or you can actually upload a custom picture. I ended up selecting, it's called Tree 2 Background, and you can get whatever custom size that you want. I ended up getting a 72 inch wide by 48 inch tall um, giant piece, as you can see here. So I ended up having to cut it. And in hindsight, I should have been a little more specific with my measurements. I just took the enclosure size, you know, 48 inches tall, two feet wide by three sides, you know, 72 inches. However, then I ended up having to trim the background to account for the metal frame of the enclosure. So really it should be a few inches shorter all the way around than what that is. But I have a affiliate link. So if you guys purchase from petbackdrops.com and shop through that link, then I get a little bit of a kickback. So feel free to support me that way. Once I cut out all three backgrounds to be the correct size for the panels, I attach them with flex glue. It's waterproof, which is great, especially for a chameleon enclosure. I just put globs on each corner and then glued it that way. So another optional step is to spray paint your dragon strand ledges. Um, I did this so it matches with my naturalistic green background. You'll need to spray paint the white ledges, which is part U, and the caps, which is P1. So I just went outside and got a nice box and then I ended up using two different spray paints, but one green, one brown, and these are just spray paints I picked up from Home Depot. And then I also picked up Flex Seal, clear which I can then spray paint on top to make them waterproof and once those are spray painted and dried then you're ready to move on to step four of the instructions which is install dragon ledges dragon strand ledges are what allow you to attach branches and pots to the inside of your enclosure a great asset that you should utilize dragon ledges are mounted on the inside of the back and side panels Back panel B has pre-drilled holes for two vertical orientated dragon ledges, while both the side panels A and C have pre-drilled holes for two horizontal dragon ledges. The inside of the panel, as a reminder, is the side with the label stickers on them, so make sure you double check which side has a sticker before you start installing your ledges. For step four, you're going to need back panel B and side panels A and C, as well as bag P. In bag P, you're going to find 18 caps, which are these black guys here, and then you're gonna have 18 7 8 machine screws, as well as 18 white barrels. Mine are green, because I spray painted them, but they come white. And you're going to have six white ledges. Again, mine are green, because I spray painted them to match my naturalistic background. The first thing you're gonna do is push the machine screws from the outside of the panel towards the inside and you'll do this in six places and then once the screws are inserted then you're going to take your barrels and put those on top of the screw post And then you're going to take your ledge and place that right on top of the barrel and then you're going to take a cap which is part p1 and screw them into each barrel and make sure it's nice and snug and then you're going to repeat that for the side panels and the back panel step five is constructing the cage that means we're almost there for part one of step five you're going to need back panel b top panel E and bottom frame D as well as bag K that's going to contain the 3 4 inch screws. So the 
bottom frame sticker is on the outside and the other panels are installed with the sticker on the inside. So you'll see where you need to attach the screws for each of the panels. And then once that's assembled, then you're going to add the side panels A and C with eight of the screws that you're going to find in bag K. Again, the stickers are on the inside of the top panel. It's important that you're putting the stickers on the inside. And just a tip from Bill, he mentions that you should attach the top panel E first to avoid slippage and possibly damaging the screen. So definitely want to do that. So part three, you're going to be installing the front of the service door, which is going to be panel G. And you're gonna use two of the screws found in bag K from the sides. And then what you're going to do is take the remaining screws from bag M. You're probably wondering what those extra screws were. So you're gonna use four of those screws found in bag M to finish attaching the hinges on the right side of the enclosure. And this is the point when I realized I put my keepers on wrong because I couldn't actually attach any of the latches. So it was an easy fix, but um, I decided to take them off, flip them around and put them on the correct way. So just, you know, make note that you do it the right way, but if not, it's not a big deal to just flip them around. And then part five of constructing the cage is going to decide which floor panel you want to use, either the solid floor panel F or the screen panel I. It's up to you which one you want to use, um, what kind of drainage system you're using, totally your choice. Um, I ended up going with the screen floor and the longer side of the panel is the side that goes on, goes to the back. It wasn't obvious to me which side was the longer panel, so just kind of mess around putting it in until you get it to have a nice fit. And then the last thing that you need to do on the steps is place your cage on top of the drainage tray. For this one, the shorter side of the tray is the front. So that's it, that's completing your enclosure. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was able to help you assemble your Dragon Strand enclosure. Stay tuned for a video about how to build out the inside of an enclosure, including how to use your Dragon Strand ledges to attach branches and plants. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Leave any questions or comments down below. Feel free to subscribe so you know when I post a new video. You can follow Neptune and all my chameleons on Instagram at NeptuneTheChameleon. Thank you so much for watching and have a good day. Bye.